afternoon, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for, uh, for attending our, our last final press conference. My name is Trooper Jim Stewart. I'm the Public Information Officer for the Nevada High Patrol, also the Public Information Officer for this event. Um, I want to thank everybody for their patience and remaining calm in this uh, disaster situation and uh, for working with all the emergency responders throughout our community. Um, I want to just kind of summarize the events that happened today so you all are aware of, of what happened in case you were not, not here for the first press release. This morning on June 1st, approximately 9 o'clock in the morning, a magnitude 7.2 earthquake occurred in Elko, Nevada. Numerous buildings were damaged and small fires have broken out throughout the city. Uh, those fires now are contained, if not out, so that's, that's good. Currently, the 12th Street Bridge is blocked and all traffic is being routed to 5th Street. For those of you guys that do not know, 12th Street Bridge is a major route between Elko and Spring Creek. So we encourage all traffic to use the 5th Street Bridge or the Ericart Bridge, which is over there next to the Sheriff's Department in, in Les Schwab. Um, as far as injuries have been reported and fatalities, currently, as of about 15 minutes ago, there were 13 injuries and two fatalities in this disaster. Um, we had an active shooter incident that occurred at the Honks Dollar Store. store. That resulted with one casualty, uh, two serious injuries, and I'm sorry, one serious injury and one and two minor injuries, and there was an officer that was injured. We will have more information on that active shooter drill probably later this afternoon or tomorrow. The investigation is is ongoing and we're still trying to put that all together. So as far as that shooting incident goes, we should have more of that uh, tomorrow and the respecting agency that's working that incident will probably be reporting on that. Um, we also had a rail car derailment that involved a hazardous material chemical that occurred near the Tricon building area, which is over there behind <coughs> Gateway RV or in the area south of the airport. Um, that spill is being contained and we don't expect any, um, any further spread of that hazardous material. It is contained, so for public safety, um, that there's no major concerns that we have on that right now. We did have a building collapse. It was a veterinarian clinic on the Moyle Highway. When that building collapsed, there were five total injuries. Three were minor and two were serious. Um, at this time, and this is still ongoing at this time, the Adobe Middle School has been designated as the emergency shelter for the uninjured. So if your home is damaged or your office building is damaged or you don't have a place to go because you have some structural damage at, at your place of residence or a business, the Adobe Middle School is available for you. Uh, that is located just north of Elko over there by the Home Depot, if you don't know where that is. So. Um, the Red Cross is also there assisting us with, with that. For those parents that have students at Grammar Number 2 and at Elko High School, I'll repeat that because there's a lot of parents and children, at Grammar Number 2 and Elko High School, those students have been moved to the Adobe Middle School shelter area. So if you need to go retrieve your children, they will be there. They were transported by the Elko School District. They're, uh, school buses and they are all accounted for at the Adobe Middle School at that shelter. Um, I just want to express our gratitude towards you and, and all of the agencies that worked together throughout this incident. I want to name specifically a few. I can't name them all, but the Elko Police Department, the Elko Fire Department, the Elko Sheriff's Department, the Nevada Highway Patrol are just to name a few of the agencies that we all work together as a team, as a unified command uh, to, to make this, um, uh, this whole process of helping our community go, go very smoothly. And we are still currently um, wrapping up this event. And if you, ha you have any questions, I will introduce the, uh, the members of our, our police and sheriff and our fire department here that are standing, standing be, uh, be behind me. Um, as of right now, that's pretty much the major events that have taken place, and um, I can be available for questions. I also have the chief of police is behind me, uh, Chief Ben Reed. He might have a few words before we start taking questions. Chief? Just 
two things to comment on. Thank you, Trooper Stewart. My understanding on the uh, active shooter incident at Honk's Dollar Store is that started out with some looting that was going on in the uh, aftermath of the earthquake. And uh, officers were sent to that area to respond to the looting. And when they got to the Honk's Dollar Store, one of the persons uh, around the store uh, opened fire towards the officers. Various officers from the Highway Patrol, the Sheriff's Office, and the Elko PD worked together to search that store and go after the gunman, and, he, and uh, they ended up basically engaging him, and he's deceased. So we now have a little bit longer period of time to get the details to you because it's an officer involved shooting. He's going to be investigated as such, and we have a crime scene. Typically, here we have the Nevada. Division of Investigation, NDI, comes out and handles those officer involved shooting investigations for us. So there's a little bit of delay to get the resources here from Carson City that we need. So that'll be ongoing. The second thing is, is that it was great to, even though uh, many disasters struck Elko today, it's great to see all the different agencies working together and pooling our resources to try to tackle these incidents as best we can. Do you know who the who the incident or who the shooter was? Do you have a name yet? We do not have a name on the shooter. Was anybody else really critically hurt, or were they just injured slightly? One citizen seriously injured. Two was it? Jim? That were minor injuries, and then the officer that was injured was a minor injury. Can you well. tell us who the officer's name was? Yeah, that's uh, Sergeant Mike Pology. He was uh, had a minor injury. He's going to be okay. He was treated at the scene. Was he, was he shot or was he just, how did he get hurt? He was shot, took a deflected bullet. Okay, at this time I'd like to introduce Sheriff Jim Pitts and he can discuss um, any issues or concerns with the county or address anything you'd like to address. Again, I'd like to thank you guys for being here and, and the work Jim Stewart did as our uh, public uh, op information officer as we were run in the unified command. Uh, we did have uh, the incident by the jail. Uh, the inmates there were locked down. We had no uh, injuries there, uh, but they were secured in place and precautions were taken uh, with the chemical. We uh, shut down the ventilation system and we take up the doors and that uh, to keep the chemicals from uh, going in the jail. So. We have no uh, uh, chemicals in the jail at this time, so we are back to uh, full open. Uh, the jail is back in operation right now. Uh, again, I'd like to thank all the supporting agencies, uh, the police department, fire department, uh, Elko County Fire Department. Uh, we all worked well together. We got these situations handled, uh, and we are uh, back into running uh, back to day-to-day -day operations, so uh, do have some cleanup to do on some of these incidents. But other than that, the citizens of Elko County really stepped up to the plate. We had our volunteers, our CERT, and our uh, VIP program that volunteered, and the citizens of Elko just stepped up. Uh, they did what they had to, they stayed out of the way, and they really, uh, again, makes me proud to be from Elko, uh, be the sheriff of Elko County. That's all I have. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the fire chief, Matt Grego. He may have some comments or more information on the specific hazmat spills and fire incidents throughout our community. Sir. Thank you, Chief Matt Grego, City of Elko Fire Department. Uh, we did have a number of incidents that the Elko Fire Department responded to today, uh, starting off with a, a structure fire that we had by the airport. Um, our units were delayed a little bit because of the structural damage to Station 1. Uh, they actually had to cut the doors down out of the way to get the engine out. Uh, fortunately, uh, our City of Elko volunteers responded from Station 2 uh, immediately to that scene and then were later backed up by Station 1 once they got free. Uh, we did have uh, injuries at that fire, uh, transported uh, one victim to Elko General Hospital from that fire shortly after. 
Uh, we had another fire reported up on North Fifth Street at the uh, uh, MD Energy substation. That fire did take out power to the northern half of the city. Uh, firefighters were able to get that fire under control and also contain a wildland fire that spread from that fire. Uh, MD Energy was then able to get in there and at the time it estimated it would take them approximately four to five hours to restore power to that northern half of the city. Uh, also, we had a uh, structural collapse that was mentioned earlier. Uh, our units were able to get in and uh, stabilize that structure, uh, remove some vi victims from there, uh, and with the help of search and rescue, um, make recoveries on uh, uh, two other uh, fatalities in that structure. Uh, in regards to the uh, hazmat incident, uh, we had three uh, uh, UP uh, tank cars derailed carrying anhydrous ammonia. One of those cars was leaking hazmat teams from both uh, Newmont, uh, uh, Newmont Gold and the City of Elko Fire Department uh, were able to get in there and isolate that leak. Uh, there, we did have one uh, victim that was uh, reported at that incident. Uh, they were deconned on site and transported to the hospital by uh, Elko Ambulance and we also had one minor uh, fire injury on that. Uh, that was just a minor ankle injury uh, during the uh, mitigation process. Um, as of this time, the hazmat incident and the building collapse uh, are being closed out. Uh, crews have stabilized those incidents and are now just uh, cleaning up equipment at this time. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody that uh, participated and uh, thank my partners in the command, both Ben Reed and Sheriff Jim Pitts, uh, for helping me uh, mitigate this incident. Chief, the, uh, the hazardous material again, what was it? Anhydrous ammonia. Uh, mostly concern there was a respiratory hazard. It was a minor leak. Uh, units on scene only detected one part per million uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, initially, uh, we sheltered in place businesses along that route, shut down the roads, um, and then did evacuations as necessary. Uh, crews were able to get uh, to the valve and get it shut off and stop that leak uh, or any other concerns. So if you're not in the immediate vicinity, you were okay with that? Is that correct. Thank you. Chief, what about the sheltering currently? How many people are sheltered and how long do you anticipate uh, having to shelter people for this incident? Um, the sheltering took place immediately when we first got report of the uh, incident. Um, I'll have to get back to you with numbers. I don't know how to have a final count. Um, we were sheltering uh, Ram Enterprises, uh, Peterbilt, Tricon Metals, uh, and clear down to the county jail initially. Once uh, hazmat crews got on scene, uh, they were able to determine that they didn't need to shelter anymore. They could be moved out of the building. Uh, but I'll have to get back to you with final numbers on that shelter. Okay. Chief, as a follow-up to that question, how many total folks do you know have been sheltered as a result of the entire incident? I, I do not have that information at this time. I'll have to get back to you. Chief, um, did you, with such a large magnitude of this type of an incident, were you able to um, engage your volunteers? We were. We Volunteers uh, played an important role because of the damage to Station 1 immediately, so uh, our volunteer forces were actually our initial responding forces as we tried to uh, free the doors at Station 1 and get them out. Uh, they were also first on scene and giving us uh, recon information on the hazmat spill, so they played a, a vital role in this incident. So those are mostly community members? They are. Thank you very much for your time. And our last speaker today uh, for comments is our, from our city manager, Jeremy Draper. Thank you. Just want to express our <coughs> sincere gratitude to everybody who's helped out up to this point, the emergency services that have worked together on this. I can report that our city council and mayor, they've worked with our county commissioners to declare this an official emergency with the state and with FEMA. So we should be seeing some relief from there. Our utility department has been out. They've looked at all the utilities for the city. Everything is safe, so the water is safe to drink. Uh, sewer is flushing just fine. We are good to go there. Uh, other utilities, non-city utilities, gas and power, they've been out inspecting their facilities as well. As far as the buildings themselves, our building official 
and engineer are out looking at each of the critical facilities at this time and will come around to each of your residents as they uh, get done with those other inspections. We do have a team of uh, 10, 10 teams of two of engineers on the way here to help us with those inspections over the next week or so. With that, I want to thank everybody for staying calm with this incident and helping out where they could. Trooper Stewart, did this date help us at all? Did this date, this drill, are we talking drills? I'm <laughs> talking like the war real. Okay. Um, yes, this, you know, this event that uh, occurred in our community, it's, it really uh, brings law enforcement, the community together. Um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a tragedy. People have lost their homes. They've, they've, um, they've, they've been injured. We've lost a, a few lives in, in, our, in our community. And it's, it's, it's a tragic situation that, that we're, you know, we're, we're dealing with. Um, I, was, I would suspect some more aftershocks um, with this magnitude of earthquake, so I would definitely stay calm. But please understand that, that uh, your local law enforcement and emergency responders are prepared to handle that. Uh, we are a unified team, and if you need help, uh, you can call 911. Uh, we are available, even though we are out there in the field and there's a lot going on. Um, if you do need us, even if it's not an earthquake-related um, you know, call, if, if you're hurt or you need some help, uh, you can call uh, your local law enforcement um, agency, and, and, and we will be there to, to, to assist you. I have a question. We are talking to some of the folks over at the hospital, and they said there's as many as 45 people injured. Can you confirm that number? I can not confirm that. I spoke to the public information officer over there at the hospital just prior to this uh, press conference, and as I said in my opening statements, we had a total of 13 that were injured. Um, I have breakdowns here. I can give that to you after the press conference, but it is not 40 people. I, I personally spoke to the public information officer at that hospital, and we have a, it's. They told me it's right at 13 that are are, are injured. So, um, not a lot of people from this large of, a, of an earthquake. So, yes. Tipper, you had mentioned in your in your starting state in your opening statement that an animal um, veterinarian clinic was had collapsed. Do you know if there was animals that were still in that, and if any of them survived? You know what? That I do not know. Um, but we can probably we can get a hold of the veterinarian you know clinic over there. I don't know. If there's casualties, if there's injuries to the animals, I don't know that, but we can we can certainly find out for for you. Okay, and one last, since there's no more questions, I want to speak on behalf of the Highway Patrol. All of the highways, Interstate 80, State Route 227, which is the Spring Creek Lamoille Highway, the State Route going up towards Mountain Home, Mountain City, which goes towards Wild Horse, north of Elko. We have had no concerns of um, of highway closures or traffic related going back and forth on the interstates. Yes, sir. And Doc, are they going to do structural uh, inspections? Some yes, of I, I, I cannot speak for, for the Veterans Department of, of Transportation, but I do know that when we had that earthquake in Wells several years ago and working with DOT, they will typically send engineers out to inspect the, the bridges. Um, we'll have to get with DOT to confirm that, but that's and there. That's what they did a few years ago with the earthquake in Wells. So um, that's a good question. I would probably get with DOT on that. But that's what they did a few years ago. Yes. Um, I have a lieutenant here with the Highway Patrol. I'd like to say a few things. Go ahead. Sir. We notified DOT. I'm Lieutenant James Sims with the Highway Patrol. DOT was notified at the onset of the earthquake, as well as DEM. They are sending crews out to do structural analysis of the bridges as well as the Carlin Tunnel and all the other critical infrastructure on the interstate and state highway system. They should be here in a few hours. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we will be available um, for the next hour or so. If you have any individual questions, uh, I will be available. Um, I know some of our staff here behind us have some things to take care of, you know, logistically, but I can get the answers for you if, uh, if I don't have them. So thank you very much. Great job. Okay, that's it.